could find my notes. The notes! We Things must consult the scroll. Which it literally <laughs> is. Yep. I'm very long because I've been adding so many authors. It's mostly That's what I actually do. what I've been called. Anytime I have to Google something, I'm like, let me consult the scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> and I just go on Google and But this is mostly what I've been doing. I mean I've been adding so many authors to this website. That's it's awesome. It's I've been got, awesome. I've got about fifteen thousand five hundred stories listed now through all the different author bibliographies. Are stuff. they all reviewed too? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. We have maybe one percent of them that we've. You know, reviewed. we got to do what we got to do sometimes. Yeah. Which I'm not so stressed about that. I yeah, just, I'm really. I want to get a resource where, if we talk about Paul, that people can go to our website and find out what else he wrote. Yeah. And maybe look it up and. Read see it. what we've got and see what we've read. So the devil in the belfry. We're we're all running. We can just you can right. do the intro. Okay, sounds good. Welcome back to Telltale, guys. I'm Emily, and Greg's drinking his tea. Unprepared. I had, <laughs> to have, had I needed to get green with envy. <laughs> Watermelon green. <laughs> it's all right. Green tea is good for you. Green tea. It's supposed to be, but I don't know. I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fountain of youth. I'm not getting any Just skinnier. <laughs> detox. Detox. Okay. Helps your liver. Anyway. So yeah, today I that, that we removes stress. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> that would be the greatest invention ever. Yes, a drink Somebody that just automatically Brave New World so more real. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> rabbit trails. <laughs> We're talking about Edgar Allan Poe in this video. We're up to God. Um, I don't even know what number this is. Um, pretty high number of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, there's a lot of his poems that he wrote before this that we didn't review, so. Mm -hmm. But that all counts. Yes, it all counts. But this is one of his short stories. This one's called The Devil in the Belfry. Yes. This is and actually a surprisingly comedic uh, story. We've had a couple of those now from Poe, so I'm very interested. I've not seen this side of Poe before. Yeah, and I, I feel like you can tell that this was written right after a predicament because once again you got people in a clock tower. Yeah, <laughs> essentially. <a> yeah, <laughs> essentially. So it was published in 1839, May 18th of 1839, in the Saturday Chronicle. Yep. And that's all I know about it, aside from you can do the synopsis. <laughs> so there's this little town in this little glen or valley that's kind of secluded and... uh it is being written from the point of view of a gentleman who once lived there. And in this town, everybody lives in the same style house, wears the same style clothes. They're practically all little clones of each other. They all have the same affinity for cabbages and cabbage growing. And uh, clocks and timekeeping. Those are their two obsessions. Mm -hmm. So their main diet is cabbage. And their main production is clocks. Mm -hmm. And they have some of the most accurate clocks in the world. But other than that, they're all dumb as stumps. <laughs> and everything works like clockwork. They themselves operate very much like a cuckoo clock. And everything they do is determined by their timekeeping. So they have this beautiful bell tower. Um, and one day, this man that they just... He doesn't look anything like them. He's an outsider and he's for sure a devil, they call him. And he comes up there, and he goes up into that bell tower, and nobody stops him because they've never had this happen before. And he gets up there and kicks the bell tower keeper's ass, and, <laughs> you know, things still proceed as normal. One, you know, 12 o'clock comes around, things are fine, but everybody knows the devil's still up in that clock tower. And then 13 o'clock strikes. <laughs> And everybody loses their minds because the <laughs> clock has never struck 13 before. Mm -hmm. And so everything gets thrown into chaos. Nothing is the same. And nobody can keep time anymore. And just the town starts on fire, essentially, because everybody starts to riot and freak out about it. And this entire story is written from the perspective of, of an article of a man who went, or a person who once lived there who is trying to advocate for someone to come and get this devil out of their clock tower. And mm -hmm. that's how the story ends. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a very comedic story, a lot of ab fun, absurd humor, um, a lot of like poking fun at the ignorant kind of humor. Um, definitely comes across as poking fun at cults in and of themselves or people who are such rule followers or like perfectionists. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways that this can be interpreted in interpreted I don't know what I'm saying anymore gosh but there's a lot of different ways you can interpret this um yeah I mean you can you can take it as simple as um there well there have really been a lot of stories and tv shows and stuff that that make fun of the way our society mm -hmm. is chained to schedules and if you're a couple minutes late your boss is mm -hmm. on your butt and things yeah. like that and I I get the feeling like Somebody was really pissing Ed Allan Poe off about yeah. some kind of schedule or, or deadline. even like <laughs> I could interpret this as the way small town America's, but this is how we have always done it, mm -hmm. gets challenged, and how people freak out when this is how we always have done it mm -hmm. gets challenged because people don't want to change. It it speaks a lot to humans wanting to be habitual and not have their their habits thrown off. Mm -hmm. And when their habits do get thrown off, how much that can throw them into some kind of emotional chaos. Yeah. So, or even physical chaos, because your emotions can affect you health-wise, too. It's really interesting. So there's a lot of different ways that this can be interpreted. It's great humor, though. I love seeing the side of Poe, because, you know, it's something you know is probably there, like all humans. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to see it. Now, I've only ever read any of his horror stuff, because, you know... Yeah. In college and high school, they're pretty iconic, so mm -hmm. you either read them then or, you know, you're a goth kid like me who just gets obsessed with the horror stuff that Poe writes and you don't read the rest of his work. Yeah. And now we've got a series of technically two, actually three stories that are kind of this absurd humor. Mm -hmm. So I'm really appreciating seeing this side of Poe, mm -hmm. personally, so... Yeah, I I thought it was good. I I didn't. It was my favorite. Part, no, it's not but, my favorite, but it is pretty funny. But yeah, it was interesting, and I loved how he was just making fun about the whole obsession with time and, mm -hmm. and clocks, and you know, if your clock is a little fast, you got to quick fix it, reset it to the correct time. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like when you come right down to it, what is the correct time? The time here is different from yeah. the time. What is time in general? Yeah, like, um, it's a human construct. Go into a black hole, and it's well, it's more than a human construct. But you go into a black hole, and it stops. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a malleable. You die, thing. and it stops. <laughs> well, well, for not you, for the rest but... of the universe. But I mean, the relativity shows us that time can be um, changed mm. in ways. I mean, they've even proven that with atomic clocks. They had one in the ground, and they put one in a jet. So the jet went up to a, a pretty high altitude mm -hmm. and flew for a while. You know, and atomic clocks are the most accurate clocks we have. Mm -hmm. And the jet came back down. They compared the time on the two clocks. They were different. Mm -hmm. Einstein predicted that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the time is relative. It depends on where you're at. Yep. You know, it can be different if you're up in the upper atmosphere. It can be different if you're on the moon. It can be different if you're... Falling into a black hole it can be very different. Different time. depending on what time zone you're in on the planet. Yeah. It's all so, different. Um, it's affected by the uh, shape of space. Mm -hmm. It's actually changed by the shape of space. So there isn't any one accurate time. Mm -hmm. That's a totally artificial construct that yeah. we have created to rule our lives. Yep. And that's kind of what Poe is pointing out, mm -hmm. that we could throw the whole thing out and still function. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except in this society, they don't, they don't know no. what to do about that. Yeah, they don't have the imagination mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, there's also so. subtle hints that they're all inbred, which is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that part. Well, it probably is the South. <laughs> yeah, you never know. They do talk uh, about mountains. Maybe it's... Virginia. It's the that's Appalachia. Where, that's where Poe is from. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, actually, I think that it was like supposed to be European or something. I can't remember. Mm, might be. It seems like it was based off of a very like Germanic sounding culture. Switzerland. They have yeah, a lot of clocks. I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but it was just really, it's just really 
funny. Mm -hmm. So worth reading. We won't call it top tale, but very good story and mm -hmm. worth looking up. Yeah. Digging a little deeper in Edgar Allan Poe than just your common ones, which um, if we were to stick to the strict um, chronological yeah. <laughs> publication mm -hmm. dates of Edgar Allan Poe, we're, we only have one more story before we would get to the Fall of the House of Usher. But of course, we've already done Fall of the House of Usher, so we're not doing that one. You so, can find that in our history. So yeah, scan look, through look the channel, you'll backlog, find that one. It's in there. Mm -hmm. um, so the next poll is actually one called The Man That Was Used Up, then The Father of the House of Usher, and then after that we'll be doing William Wilson, which is a fairly well-known Poe story. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this story. Me too. Thank you again for joining us. Like, subscribe. Please join us also on our Patreon. We're very excited to have started that for 2023. Um, we will continue doing Poe here on YouTube, but you will find other exclusive content, including, but not limited to, exclusive reviews, um, live videos. We're going to be doing uh, some, all of our topical videos are switching over there. All of our poetry readings and short story readings, we will switch over to there and more. So please join us over there. It is a flat rate of $10 a month for all that content. There aren't any other levels, and everything that you do goes back into Telltale. Um, either our publishing, we have also talked about potentially upgrading some of our, our camera and things like that too. So whatever you do, it supports us in our dreams of getting publications to you and continuing to give you great content. So thank you again, and guys, for And for all you Poe folk, yeah. we're going to keep the Edgar Allan Poe videos yeah, For all the Poe folk, <laughs> I'm just a Poe boy from a Poe family. Yep. So yeah. We're definitely going to keep giving you great content here on YouTube, but more exclusive stuff on our Patreon. So thank you again, guys, for joining us, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.